Monday, March 25th, 2019, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. This morning, I want to talk about how gold is so important to have uh, and to accumulate, uh, if you can, also silver, of course, uh, as a dollar cost average uh, insurance for monetary mayhem. Uh, and why do I say monetary mayhem? Well, because the policy, uh, monetary policy central banks are conducting since the uh, 08 crisis is completely unprecedented, uh, completely, uh, how can I say, uh, extreme. <laughs> All the trillions of uh, dollars that they've printed out of thin air, uh, which has been hypothecated and leveraged upon by the banking system, uh, all the uh, all the bubbles it's created, and now we we see that very clearly with the ECB, with the Fed, that uh, it's very difficult for them, or it will be impossible for them to ever normalize uh, their policy to pre two thousand and eight uh, uh, policy, and that uh, if anything, they're going to have to keep uh, increasing you know, this monetary uh, mayhem or madness even more, unless, uh, you know, they, they're, unless they want to see the system implode right away. And uh, with that, I, I'm going to look at a very good uh, book by Jim Sinclair and Peter Carlin called A Pocket Book of Gold, A Survival Manual for Monetary Mayhem. And I'll look at some of, uh, it's a sh very short book. Uh, I'm not sure if you can find it online. It could be fairly expensive, but uh, you can always check. Uh, and the other book I'm going to quickly look at that I highly recommend, I, I read quite recently, and it's a fiction book, but to do with what could happen in the future is uh, The Mandibles by Lionel Shriver. Highly recommend this as well. Before going into the books, let's quickly have a look at what the markets are doing. 7.28 a.m. London time. We still got a week uh, until uh, the clocks are put forward uh, here in the UK and also in the continent of Europe. So right now, spot gold is up uh, three and a half dollars at 13.17. Uh, right near the highs, 13.17. 13 17 50 is the high the low has been 13 13 10 84 silver is up six cents at 15 49 high has been right around here 15 51 low 15 38 uh, the dow right now dow future down 90 it actually opened quite well uh late yesterday it was late for me the the, the future was up uh over 100 points, I think, but right now it's down 90. It's turned around, down a third of a percent. S&P 500 uh, is down eight and a quarter, uh, just under a third at 27.92, so back below 2,800. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 futures down about 45 points or two thirds of a percent at 72.80. Uh, pound is down a quarter of a percent against the dollar 131.75 the uh, euro is unchanged 113.05 dollar is up slightly against the yen 10 pips 110.02 and the dollar is down uh, yeah about uh, 0.1 of a percent against the chinese currency the yuan 671.80 quickly on uh, someone mentioned about italy and china they signed a, a deal trade deal the one belt, one road deal. Uh, is that significant? Fairly significant. I don't think, I think it's more quite symbolic. There isn't really that, you know, uh, and yeah, it's symbolic, but it's not going to change things very quickly. It just goes to show that Italy is a sovereign country. And that's why, uh, how can I say, uh, the EU, in my opinion, uh, and this is a little bit on Brexit, has a lot more to lose than the UK if the UK leaves without a deal this Friday. So the deadline is this Friday. If the UK le leaves without a deal, it's going to show all the other EU countries that they, they can leave. Because 
I don't think it's going to be as disastrous as uh, some people uh, say and uh, scaremonger about leaving without a deal. So yeah, the, it would be much worse for the EU, European Union. Uh, oil. Uh, yeah, oil's down a bit here. We've come back below uh, 60, 58.70, down half a percent to WTI. Brent is 66.40, also down half a percent. Bond markets this morning. Uh, while yields are continuing to drop, the 10-year yield is down 1.4 basis points right now at 244. Uh, so completely inverted from one month to 10-year right now. Uh, the one-month T-bill is at 248, so four basis points inversion of the curve. So not good, of course. Even the mainstream now is, uh, you know, you look at uh, investing, uh, dot com they're saying flashing amber global stocks tumble bonds rally on u.s re recession risk which is something we've been saying uh since the beginning of march that there's a big risk of so now to uh the book a pocket book of gold um and i've been following jim sinclair since 2002 uh he has a website called jsmindset.com if you want to follow it it's all about gold and the markets. So, yeah, A Pocket Book of Gold, A Survival Manual for Monetary Mayhem by James Sinclair and Peter Carling. Of course, uh, this is just about your financial um, well-being, in my opinion. Uh, and this is what I do. It, it's, uh, you know, if you want to uh, follow what I do, you should do your homework first and... Try to learn as much as you can, like I've done. You know, the reason why I, I can sit here and talk about these things is that I've done a lot of research, a lot of reading of people who have done it in the past. Of course, I also have the market experience, but uh, yeah, you need to do your homework. So what what does the this book talk about? Well, chapter one, why own gold? And one of the, <laughs> they put a quotation from Ludwig uh, von Mises, who's kind of a, uh, one of the fathers of the Austrian School of Economics, which I'm a proponent of. Free markets, small government, sound money, that's what they espouse. They, they look at uh, economics more as a, not an exact science, but a, a, you know, a study of human action and consequences and what happens when uh, governments intervene, uh, all the disruptions it creates in the free market. This is what Ludwig uh, von Mises said about credit bubbles and credit cycles, which is what we're in right now. Uh, and I quote, there is no means of avoiding a final collapse of a boom brought, brought about by credit expansion. <clears throat> the alternative is only whether the crisis should come sooner as a result of a voluntary abandonment of further, of further credit expansion or later as a final and total catastrophe of the currency system involved. So this is what he said, and this is where we're in. So they're delaying right now. And at least it gives you time. Uh, don't get frustrated. Uh, be patient. Uh, by knowing this, uh, it will give you, uh, you know, the patience and the uh, intellectual, uh, how can I say, uh, ammunition to know uh, what uh, is coming. So gold is insurance. Uh, that's what they say here. The primary reason to own gold is that it maintains value, especially during times of political, economic, and cur currency-related crisis. In short, it operates as insurance. That includes but is not limited to insurance against political uncertainty and economic disorder, as well as insurance against the whims of central banks and their tendency towards money printing. When economies accumulate excessive debt, all sounds very familiar. This book was written uh, about 12, I think, let's see here, 2010, nine years ago. Yeah, uh, when economies accumulate excessive debt, most governments try to erase the debt through currency inflation. They monetize the problem away by printing currency. 
This, of course, devalues the currency. Creditors are paid with depreciated currency. So are citizens. People's wages are effectively cut and savers have the rug pulled out from under them. What was worked for declines in what was worked for declines in value, generally speaking. This is where you don't want to be as an individual, at the mercy of central bank government generated inflation. Inflation destroys purchasing power, lowers the value of one's savings and investments, and cuts living standards. Gold ensures against this by preserving value and therefore wealth. So yeah, I'm not here to tell you, oh, buy gold and you're going to make a fortune. This is not the poor purpose of gold. Uh, you might be lucky to buy gold one day and then the next day we, we get uh, some kind of spike higher. Yes, and you make uh, some, you, you will make a profit in your local currency. But this is not the reason for owning gold, as you can see, here, is that as insurance. Uh, there's an interesting part as well at the back of the book, chapter five. He says, aphorisms of gold. These are just sayings about gold. Uh, meditations and principles for the gold buyer. The aphorisms are to be meditated on, not read through. That is only because that is because only when they're considered in some kind of isolation and dwelled on is their prop is their power revealed. They will lead your intellect through a pathway of considered reason. Pick one, only one at a time. And spend a few days contemplating it. Contemplating it. If you do it right, it will be highly educational. So, uh, first one, gold is currency. Uh, second one, gold is competition to paper currency. Third one, gold is not a commodity. Uh, by that, I mean, I think they mean gold is not like every other commodity because I think it is a monetary commodity. Gold is a barometer of fear. Yeah, definitely. When you get volatility and fear in the overall market. Gold is a barometer of confidence in government. Government, definitely. Gold is insurance. If investment, if investment is your goal, then look at gold as insurance. Gold is insurance against governments gone mad. Insurance is not something to trade. I've said that in the past. Do not trade your physical gold. Uh, you can try, maybe trade futures if you want, or, but I don't recommend it. You just uh, help, you know, the powers that be perpetuate that their game. Anyway, there's a lot uh, of aphorisms here, and I won't go through all of them, but I highly recommend you get this book if you can. I'm not sure where you can find it, but on the internet, you can find things almost anywhere. So... Uh, how long is it? Well, it's not that long. It's just over 100 pages. Very interesting little book, a pocket book of gold. Uh, the other one, of course, I recommended this uh, over a month ago. One of the viewers uh, recommended this book, and I hadn't seen it before. Uh, the author, she's uh, American, but is based in London. She's a journalist, Lionel Shriver. Yeah, that's her name, Lionel. And uh, this is a fiction book about uh, this family uh, from 2029 to 2047. But it's, uh, I highly recommend it. It's not very, uh, how can I say, joyful. <laughs> it's a little bit depressing. But uh, yeah, it's uh, a fun way to, to learn what's going on in the system and what we could be facing in the future. Uh, the mandibles and one thing about this book I, I couldn't put it down and I finished it in the weekend because it's such an interesting read it's just over 500 pages the mandibles what does it say here uh, it is 2029 reading from the back the US national debt has grown so enormous that it can never be repaid well, sounds familiar the dollar is in meltdown a bloodless international currency war will wipe out the savings of millions of American families. Their pending inheritance turned to ash. Each member of the formerly formidable men mendable family must contend first with disappointment, then the challenge of sheer survival. 
as they navigate a society in ruin. A frightening yet scabrously funny look at a nation's not so distant future from the pen of perhaps the most consistently perceptive and topical author of our times, The Demandables, A Family, 2029 to 2047, is Lino Shriver at her incisive best. So, yeah, these two books. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you enjoy my videos but haven't subscribed yet, think about subscribing. Uh, make sure you also hit the little notification bell above uh, so you're notified of my new videos. Uh, make sure you share this video far and wide as well if you, you think there are other people who would enjoy this kind of content. And uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, Steemit, and DTube. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.